Welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, we're excited to be back with part two of our mobile designing uh, live stream. And I am your host today. I'm Danielle Morimoto, and I'm a design manager for Creative Cloud here at Adobe. Uh, we are joined back with our guest, uh, our designer from San Diego, Cody Brown. <laughs> What's going on? Are you excited for the second day of the stream? Stay you. I'm ready. Ready to go. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, yeah, Cody was with us yesterday. He was designing uh, a dog-friendly hiking adventure app, which he's gonna continue to design today. Um, and don't worry if you missed the stream uh, yesterday, we'll be doing a little recap, so you'll be all caught up. Um, but let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, we are obviously live separately from our homes yep. today <laughs> to be on the safe side, um, but we have a good agenda for today. So I just want to cue that up really quickly and walk you through what's going on. Um, so it looks a little similar to yesterday with a couple differences. This morning had that tips and tricks with Valentina, uh, the Photoshop daily creative challenge, drawing and painting with Isaac. And then just before this, we just finished up with Andrew with the Illustrator daily creative challenge, which what an outfit from Andrew today with the hat, <laughs> if anyone caught that. Um, but yeah, for the next two hours, Cody and myself are going to be here. Cody's going to be continuing his designs. Um, so definitely give us a quick hello. And then you can stay tuned. There's more coming on after this with the XD Daily Creative Challenge and then the Creative Encore with Hutzpah Design. So that will be really exciting as well. Um, so a quick hi to Angela, who says hi to Cody. We have Clever joining us. Andrea hey. is joining us from Iceland, which is awesome. Um, Iceland, awesome. Um, Angela is joining from Montreal. And then, of course, Cody's mom is on the stream today <laughs> representing. Woo! What's hi, up, Cody's mom? mom. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis from New Hampshire. Everybody's here. <laughs> I think my dad might be watching too. So hello, hello, pops. Oh wow. Okay, tell us a big hello to that as well. Um, the other thing we have going on today is we do have an artist spotlight that we're going to be doing. So about 95 minutes into the stream, uh, we'll be highlighting an artist, and so definitely stick around for that. Let us know if you'd like to be featured in the future or if you recommend a friend. Uh, and if you're not already on Behance, head on over. That's where we're gonna be engaging with you guys in the chat. Uh, and there's also, you know, the spotlight tab so you can check out more info there. Um, yeah, lastly, we have moderators in the chat. So if you have any other questions, you can also, uh, I'm sure they'll answer some of those for you today as well. And uh, we're excited to be here. Um, Matt is joining from Canada. We have Henry yes. from London, like people all over. Sherry, hi, in Kansas. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you guys have questions during the stream about what you're seeing about Cody's designs, career questions, Adobe XD, um, send them through. And we'd love to, to chat with all of you. Um, so with that, Cody, it'd be great if maybe you can reintroduce yourself in case we have new people on the stream joining us today and then give a little recap as to what you were working on yesterday to get people up to speed. Absolutely, thanks, Danielle. Uh, yeah, so my name is Cody Brown. I'm a designer based out of San Diego. Um, I've been designing for probably like seven to eight years now. Um, a little bit of everything from branding, packaging, uh, UI design, website design. Uh, I find that it's fun to kind of, you know, get into multiple types of mediums just because it keeps it interesting. And you can kind of learn a little bit from every different um, format. So there's something you can learn from animation that you can bring into UI design. So I found that it's been a nice approach for me uh, in my career. And um, this is just some of my work kind of uh, in a grid here. So I do a lot of like branding, exploration, packaging, 
Um, and then obviously like the UI design, which we'll be going over today. Um, yesterday, we actually went through uh, the beginnings of a mobile app called National Bark, which is a fictitious app that uh, I was inspired by a few friends of mine, uh, John Alley, they came up with this idea where you could essentially, if you go to a national park and there's moments or places you can't bring your dog to, perhaps you could check your dog into say, a, uh, the national park and they could be in a daycare for the day or maybe even a park that's themed um, similar to the park that you're actually um, visiting. So maybe if you're at Yosemite, there's a cool like half dome kind of dog playground or something like that. Or even like Big Sur, maybe there's a cool like waterfall, I don't know. Uh, but that's what's fun about this is that we can explore the, the concept and actually build out an app that um, sort of, you know, plays around with that idea. And so yesterday we went through and created an onboarding flow with these fun illustrations from Adobe Stock. Um, this is a, the branding that I put together. Um, just kind of fun and simple. It, it kind of feels outdoorsy, something that you could see on like a t-shirt. I actually have some of the initial exploration that I can pull over here. So it started here with just, um, you know, actually mocking up logos, maybe some merch, some of those like vintage motel keychains that are pretty popular now. And then, you know, some photo treatment. So this is where we started. And then we kind of went into some actual like rough wireframes or sketches that I like to do sometimes before I actually design, just so that you're not kind of going in cold. You have a little bit of a, of a background or a launching pad when you get into XD and do more high fidelity uh, prototypes. So we've got, you know, just some like button exploration. Maybe this was our actual splash page that we built from. And then how these pages link together, you know, your sign up, your create account, your discover page. Um, so I find it's it's just really beneficial to do something like this so that, you know, when you are designing more high fidelity, you have a, a, a frame of reference or something in mind to kind of move forward with. Um, not necessary, but I, I think it's, it's highly recommended. So, we can actually start jumping back in to XD. Yeah, Nikki just added in the chat. Holy cow, I love this idea. I didn't watch yesterday and I hate not being able to bring my dog fishing with me. <laughs> I've brought my dog fishing with me once, but it was kind of difficult because it's hard to hold like a fishing yeah. pole and a leash at the same time, you know? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> and actually, before you jump back into this, I know when you were showing your portfolio, there were some questions there. I know Eric was asking in the chat, when you were going through all of the different type of work that you do, the question was, what do you enjoy most and what do you consider your, your best at? Man, I don't, I have no idea. I, I mean, I think I work in UI design mostly for my, for my day job at uh, Experiences for Mankind. So we do a lot of um, like mobile apps and, and retail uh, demo apps that are also on desktop. So I think the, the bulk of the work that I do is UI design. Here, I'll just pull over. Um, I post mostly my branding work on my drill wall just because it's easier for me to kind of keep that um, in its own category. But um, on my website, you can see more of my UI design work. I don't really know. I mean, you guys would have to tell me. I think I've come from a branding, branding and print background. So I would say maybe I'm more proficient in that. But over the last like three to four years, I've focused pretty heavily on UI, UI and UX design. So. It's a tough question. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a good question. Thanks for sending that one through in the chat. All right. Well, let's get back into it. So yesterday we kind of left off with, let's just go through this flow really quick so we can kind of recap. So we had this um, kind of splash page that welcomes you to the actual app and then you would click get started. And we have this nice auto animates uh, transition sliding over to the right and then it welcomes you. So whoever you are, it'll say your name here. Ideally it would populate your name. And then you can either click sign in or create account. I think we, we built out a page for create account. So you have multiple different options here. You could either sign up with your phone number. You could sign up with Chewy, which is another like dog brand. Um, I think they sell a lot of like dog food and, and play toys and things like that. So, Again, giving the users the ability to sign in really quickly with uh, an account that they've already established will just, uh, you know, lessen the amount of clicks or like fill, having to fill out forms and all that. So we want to make this a, an easy entry. And if they want, they can also sign up with email. And we added a back button here. And maybe if somebody doesn't want to do any of that and they want to explore the app and just kind of see what it's all about, we want to give the, the user or the um, 
customer the ability to do that. So we, we added a skip button here. And so we have our little uh, profile. This is Audrey. So that's, it was actually something fun that we added yesterday on the stream. Originally, this was like a human, but we're like, why not make it about the animal, you know, the, about, about your, your pet. So Audrey's Audrey, our little pug. Cute. That little like pug illustration was too good to pass up. <laughs> yeah, that was a great idea. So we added that. And it kind of plays into the illustration that we have at the beginning of the app. So it makes it a little bit more um, cohesive. And so this is a discover page where you could actually go in. I added a few more of these just to kind of save some time on this page so we can get to some other pages. Uh, but these are all just different parks. Perhaps there's hikes or overnight stays too. Um, and then we, we had a little fun trying to make a flip animation happen yesterday. I actually got it to work. Um, so you would click that, you could save it to your favorite parks and then eventually it would go back. And then we also have just different sort of parks here. So we have like Sequoia, uh, Joshua Tree. I added Dakota in there just as a fun little Easter egg. So it's not an actual location, but I just wanted to give a shout out to my pup. He's a cutie. Is Dakota in the room now sleeping? He's over there sleeping. I made sure to take him on a long walk to kind of tire him out. <laughs> nice. um, but so I realized when you get here, it could be kind of nice to add some sort of like bottom a footer or just like some indication that you've reached the bottom of the page because this could be an infinite scroll perhaps like if there's more than six there could be maybe 30 but there's going to be times when you're in a location that um you know maybe there's not that many parks in the area so i thought it'd be fun to actually building on this kind of audrey idea of like bringing more illustration in and kind of tying things together we could actually extract um maybe this little doggo right here and kind of put them at the bottom with like a message that says, you know, you've reached the end of the list or you, there's no more, no more parks to be found here. So I can just paste him in. Him or her, I'm not really sure with this doggo. But we can grab some of our text from up here and just paste it down here. Maybe it says something like, no more parks. Again, I'm not a copywriter, so we're just using placeholder. End of the trail. Yep, Marsha. You know, kind of play in. Stream with us yesterday. Hello, Marsha. Thanks for joining. Hey, Marsha. Suggested something like, we are pausing here with like the joke that you Ooh. had again. No more parks. <laughs> Let's do that. No, or we are pausing. And that's the thing too, the tone of this app should be fun and kind of like tongue in cheek almost. So I like that. Cool, yeah, and Raphael in the chat who um, wasn't able to join yesterday was asking, did you create those illustrations? Um, Cody went through it yesterday, but those illustrations are something that he actually was able to grab on Adobe stock. And then he modified and added like a little bit of his own flair to it, added some other trees and kind of tweaked it for the design um, that he was doing for this specific app. Yeah, it's a lot of fun just to kind of tweak it a little bit, making your make it your own, like even this, I think we can kind of add a little bit of a background shape just to give it a little bit more depth. And so it's not as flat. So we can go to our design tab and I'm going to grab my pen tool. And I'm just going to try to give him like a nice, like subtle little flowy shape just to kind of uh, give him a little bit of a background. And again, create some of that I don't want to say dimension, but just a little bit of a uh, texture behind them. And I'm going to fill it in with a color sampled from this background, but maybe we just kind of, you know, bring it down in value a little bit and then we can put it right behind them. So he's kind of like peeking out of this little, for lack of a better word, blob, blob shape or something. So it's just a fun little moment. Again, we're looking for those fun little delightful moments that we can add to the app that make you feel welcome and just, you know, we want this to feel approachable for people. And it plays into that whole, you know, 
the illustration story that we're, we're telling here. Ah, oh, so good. <laughs> like you would be upset that you lost, you don't have any more results, but then how could you be mad when you see this little guy? You know, that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> and I know people are loving like the puns in the, the chat. I know Eric was suggesting to you, he was like, no more, no more pox, like parks, but pox. I can't even uh, like say it. <laughs> pox. Okay. We're creating a whole new language with this. Uh, yeah. The paw jokes are just running through. I could see that even in like a branding guideline for this, for this particular brand, you could have a whole like three pages on just the language and the tone and the type of uh, things that you would say for this brand. Totally. Cool. So we've got that page. And I remember yesterday on stream, somebody brought up the idea of, I wish I could remember the name right now. Maybe you could figure it out because I don't have a live chat in front of me, but um, making like a doggy camera. So maybe when you're on your hike, if you if you still get Wi-Fi, being able to actually check on your on your doggo, you know, so like like tuning into the app of a live cam feed that shows you, you know, the dogs in the park. So I think it'd be fun to create that. And I think because that's such a big feature, I would want it on this page, I think. So like if you're logged in and Audrey is perhaps like at one of these parks, maybe there's a um, an indication up here that she's, that you can go live and actually uh, watch her. So I think for this, I'm gonna grab my rectangle shape Let's just turn our guys on again real quick. Kind of want to make sure I'm lined up to the, the same grid as everything below. And what I'm going to do here is just make a container and we can put live camera feed or something like that with like a little icon that shows like a camera or, you know, something that like indicates that uh, she could be live right now. I'm going to round this maybe like 10. And we can turn our guides off now that we already know it's kind of lined up. And I'm just kind of center aligning it to Audrey, Audrey's text here. I don't think we need a fill for this, but we can make a border. Again, I'm going to sample this background. Just kind of bring it up or sorry, down in value a little bit. And let's copy our Audrey text. And just paste it. I'm going to double click on this. So I paste it right on top and let's just type live camera. Might bring this down a little bit actually. So it doesn't take away from this Audrey title. And I'm almost thinking that maybe, maybe the camera isn't always live. Maybe there's certain times of day that this camera could actually be available. So, we can make this a component and actually add two states. So let's make the first state like off, like the, the off state. So I think we could kind of sample again, this sort of color, maybe bring it up a little bit. And then I think we need to add an icon. Just, I always see like a, a camera icon or some kind of indication of a live feed next to those sorts of uh, features or those components. So let's actually add one of those. I think the other fun thing about this idea of like the live camera with the dogs is I feel like national parks also a lot of them have like live cameras now I feel like like at Yosemite like they have live cameras that you can like tune into and like just look at what like the falls are doing or something like that so it's kind of fun to also be able to like you'll want to check in on like the dogs. <laughs> yeah it's a big upsell too like if I ever go to a like a doggy dick I've taken a code to a few of them and um there was one that didn't have it. And I don't know if I'll go back to that one, you know, like it was a great place, but I, I want to be able to see my, my pup when I'm gone, you know? <laughs> so this is cool. I actually found a two icons that are the same ones off and ones on. I think we could have those both for this, uh, for this component. So I'm just gonna put this over here for now. And I'm going to size them down to like 20. Oh, I got my responsive resize. Sometimes when you're scaling icons and you have responsive resize on, it can kind of make things funky. So I always just turn that off. And then I'm going to bring the border down to like two. Well, so even like a 1.5. As you're Sorry. doing that, I know Voodoo Ball had a question for you. 
Cody, who are your favorite designers? Man, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> um, there's a lot out there. Uh, I, I could pull up a list for you guys, but I, I would say like off the top of my head, um, Steve Wolf is a really great like branding designer. He does a lot of really awesome work for um, just a ton of different brands. He has an amazing portfolio. So I make, I would check him out. He's probably got a Behance. Uh, he's really great. Um, DKNG is one of my favorite illustration companies. They do amazing illustration. Um, as far as like UI design, I think there's an account, um, Kuberto Design. I'm sure everybody's familiar with them. They've got an amazing app design. It's very clean and minimal, but there's tons. I could probably rattle off like 30 more if I really like thought about it, but I can't multitask that well, so. <laughs> yeah, you're designing at the same time. Yeah, and let us know in the chat if you guys have, who are some of your favorite designers? Um, definitely share with us as well. Let me zoom out real quick just to see how this is reading. I think it's a little wide. So when you were zooming out, you're just looking at the the side padding that you had and trying to gauge if it was too big or not. Is that right? Just down at, trying to see how it reads. It, it felt like it was too wide and it was getting too close to Audrey here. So I think that, and let's actually just look at the at our phone real quick and see if that looks okay. Which is another common thing I will do when I'm designing. Uh, one second. Cool. And while Cody's pulling that up, Booty Val has shared some of the links that Cody mentioned of some of the designers that he, he likes. So Steve Wolf's, DKNG Studio, um, all those links are in there too. So you can check out some of those designers' work as well. You guys are fast. Was that Voodoo Val that put those <laughs> on? on that, yeah. <laughs> nice job, Voodoo. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, you can t easily tap that. It's not too close to the to the notch up there. And um, I think it looks good. And that obviously looks like it's off because it's not really like filled in with any color. So I think for our on state, we could actually add a bit of color, something that kind of pops a little bit. So I'm gonna switch back to my desktop screen here. And for those of you that weren't with us yesterday, Cody was using the Adobe XD mobile app um, and just has that plugged in. So that's how he's previewing it on his phone and able to like really quickly see how things feel on his phone. So I'm just gonna bring this in on top and try to match the same sizing here. There's definitely a better way to do this than how I'm doing it, but it's, it actually kind of snapped to it, which is nice. And I knew that I had that 1.5 sizing on the stroke. So I'm just going to copy that and delete it for now. And let's make this a component. So I'm going to select all of these items. I'll group that real quick. Let's just call this camera off. And we'll call this stroke. Okay, so we have those three elements. We want to group them. So I'm going to right click and hit group. And then let's just name this live cam for now. And let's right click it again and make a, a component. I believe I probably could have just right clicked before and hit made a component. It would group it as well. But I just kind of want to show you the process of actually grouping things and then identifying that it is a component. So right here in the top right, you can see that we have this new kind of panel here and it's called component main. So this is our main component. If we made more of these, this is the master component. You can see that it has that because it has this um, kind of filled in uh, diamond. Whereas here it's got a more of like a hollow diamond. So that's how you can always remember that this is the master. And basically what that means is like, if I move stuff around within this one, it'll affect it on that other component. So this is kind of what we were talking about yesterday. If you have like buttons or just certain elements that you want to be able to update very quickly, like say I want to change the color of this and I have like 40 other instances of this on my uh, artboard, I can just do that and it'll update all of those. And you can still update things within these child um, components and it won't override the, the parent, but anything that you change here should update it here. 
So we'll go ahead and delete that. We're only gonna make one of these, so we only need the one. But the reason why we made this a component is because we wanna put multiple states within it. So if you come up here to this little plus, you can see it says add a state. We're gonna to go to new state. And we're just gonna say, we're gonna call it camera on. And this is where we wanna make the change um, as to what happens when this camera goes live. So I think an obvious one would be just changing the border color. Maybe we go with this like red, just because it does, it contrasts pretty well on this like beige background. And it lets you know like, all right, like usually like when you're live on any software, to my knowledge, you guys can tell me, but I feel like it's always like a red or like a bright orange or something like that to kind of indicate like, oh, we're live now. So yeah, it's, I don't it's a, feel like it's like a vivid color, something that catches your eye so that you know that there's like a notification or there's something going on that's live right right away. But I find, yeah, these button components, like one of the best like button states, the like best updates. <laughs> I, I find that I just use it so much for all of the different buttons that I have because uh, before it was like much harder to do without that um, widget on the right hand side. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier to, to see what you're doing. Okay, so. I'm selecting my component, camera on. I'm gonna select the camera off one and just turn the opacity off. So it kind of fades out as it turns on. And then I also wanna make this the same color. I don't know if it's too much to make this the same color as well. What do you guys think? Let us know in the chat which version you prefer, the one with all orange or with the, the black in there. I kind of like that because it seems like there's enough going on with the border and the icon that we want this text to be legible. And that might be something for accessibility where it might be kind of hard to read for certain people. But that's something to test as well. So right now we're on the camera on state. Let's go back to our default state and see how that switches. You can kind of toggle through here and just make sure that it's previewing the way that you want it to preview. So I think that's looking good. Now we need to actually make the, the camera, you know, the live feed of, of your dog at the park here. So I think what we can do for that is make an overlay. So if we make a another artboard over here, I'm just gonna get rid of everything. We just really need the artboard. And it doesn't need to be super tall. We can actually just match what we already had. We'll call this um, live cam. You know what, let's call it puppy cam. Yes. And um, I think what we're gonna do here is Create a shape, because this is gonna be sort of like a like a drawer or like a pop-up that covers up the screen. So when you click that, it just kind of slides up into place and then maybe you could like slide it back down with your thumb. So I'm gonna create a rectangle for this. Just the same width as my artboard. And maybe it comes up to like right here so that you know that it's a drawer and you can kind of slide it back down if you want to. I'm gonna take the border off and then let's just round these top two edges here. So if I, I can do that with um, this corner radius tool here or different radius for each corner, it's called. I'm gonna type in 15. It's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna make it a different color real quick so you can, just can see. And I actually like that. I actually like that green color for this because it contrasts with the page that you're currently on. So maybe that's what we go with for the actual background of this puppy cam card or drawer rather. And so I think uh, since this is a drawer, um, I know that on apps that you're familiar with, there's like a little bit of like a, like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a, a, a little grip that lets you know that you can slide that up and down. So we can make one of those. I don't know the proper name for that. Does anybody in the chat know? That's a great question. I feel like it's a common UI piece now in the new OS kind of functions, but I, I'm not sure if I know the name for it. So yeah, definitely let us know if you know what that's called. 
So again, I'm sampling from the same green color and just kind of coming down in value so that it kind of contrasts a little bit. It's a little wide. I, I'm, I'm sure I've seen the name of it in like UI kits before, but it's not coming to me right now. Yeah. Raphael said maybe it's called a drawer. Maybe. Oops. Can't type today. Val calls it a tray. So we're getting drawer, tray, kind of different terms there. Well, so the bat, the whole thing itself is a drawer, right? But I'm wondering if this little actual piece right here has a name. Like, is it something within the tray? I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, other people are like tray handle or just like a handle. Tray handle. Let's call it handle. I like that better than grip. I think a grip would be more, um, there would be like more dots or something involved. Okay, so we have that. Now let's give this a little title. So I just copied this discover and brought it over. We'll center align it here, bring it up. And let's just say live puppy cam. I think about 30 pixels from the top is good. Maybe 40. And we can actually borrow that same camera icon. So camera on. Let's bring it over here and paste it. I might actually size it up a little bit because it's in a bigger format here. And let's just sample that same color. I'm gonna turn my lock on so it scales proportionately. Maybe here it goes to like a two, two weight. And I'm gonna group these two together. We'll just say title. And if I um, if I shift select both layers here and then go to my alignment, the center line, it should just perfectly kind of slot it over there, which is what we want. I think this weight could come up a little bit, maybe like a 2.5. Kind of matches that, uh, font weight a little bit more. And so now we have to actually add the um, the feed, the view of uh, what your uh, camera would be looking at. So again, I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and just kind of drag a, a window per se here. Get rid of our border. And again, I don't really want any hard edges that often in this app. So I think I'm gonna round these again maybe to like a 15. I think the consistency has been nice also that you've, I feel like you've been using the 15 on the cards as well for the roundness. So it's kind of consistent going throughout. Yeah, it just, it, it feels like it's a family, you know, like every, every element is, is considered and there's no um, inconsistencies without or throughout the app, which is something that I always try to look for. Definitely like it's good to get another designer's eye on, on things like this so that there's definitely gonna be moments where you, you forgot about something or you didn't consider, uh, maybe something could be designed a little bit better. So having the ability to iterate on your design is, is very important in my opinion. So I have this image over here. I have two images. So I've got this one from Adobe Stock, which I thought was kind of cool because maybe this could be an area of the dog park that there, you know, maybe there's a fence around all of this and there's multiple dogs and they're in the forest <laughs> or a of dogs. I, love I know <laughs> it's like somebody who's holding a treat up for that picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I have this one, which looks like a regular park, but I feel like if you zoomed into like this area, we have trees in the background, so it could work for a dog park and they're, you know, these are dogs at play. Do you have a preference, Danielle? Um, maybe the powwow, it's just powwow. Yeah. All right. We'll go with that one then. And so with our uh, shape selected, I can just drag this in and it'll populate. And I might zoom in a little bit on this. So this might be a, a view of uh, one of the cameras and I'm thinking that there could be multiple angles. So Maybe certain parks have like six cameras installed if, if they're really fancy, or maybe some of them just have like about two. So 
um, we're gonna we're gonna maybe add a button down here that says like next camera. So maybe you could like change your view. But first, I think also, which could be kind of important for dog owners, is being able to like take a picture, like a snapshot that they could like send. Like maybe um, maybe your dog sitting one of your one of your friends' dogs, and you take them with you on this adventure, and you want to just let them know that you know uh, Audrey is okay. You could take a snapshot picture and send it to to the owner. So I'm gonna actually add a circle element right here. I think about 60 is a good size. This is gonna be a button that you can just press and it'll just take a snapshot. I mean, who wouldn't want a photo of that moment of those dogs? Right? <laughs> I would say Bow Wow, Voodoo Bell in the chat said, do you mean Bow Wow of dogs? Bow I think mean, the are just like getting out of hand. <laughs> yes. We're gonna, have a whole, better one. we're gonna have a whole library of terms. Yikes, yeah. <laughs> So for this, I added a background blur to this shape so that it can kind of sit on top of, of the image and, and it's using the information behind it. So whatever it goes on top of, it's making that little blur happen. I like this effect and you see it a lot in apps nowadays. I'm just gonna darken it a little bit though. So we can put an icon on top of this. And I think the camera would be different than this one since this is more of like a video camera feed. We want more of like a traditional kind of point and shoot camera. I'm gonna go back to my plugins for icons and just type in camera. This one looks to be in the same style, the same kind of stroke weight that we've been using. So I'm gonna pick this one. That's actually a really good point that you bring up Cody too around like the difference of the icons and kind of what they generally mean. I think. It's important to note that some of the icons are typically used in a certain way in other applications already. So if you decide to use one in your app, there might be something that a user expects when they see that icon already, like this specific kind of, Cody was saying, point and shoot camera, typically will take a photo or screenshot, whatever it is, versus the really video one that he was using before, people more think of it as recording, right? Like some type of video is happening. So it's really important to think through what type of icon you're using and how other people may or may not already have associations with it. Agreed. I think um, I wouldn't even call it more of a trend. It's more just a design pattern that's been established for whatever reason, it's just caught on. And most people are, you know, they recognize that. So it's important to, if you're gonna introduce something new, there's gotta be a good reason for it, you know? Yeah. Or so else you I know you're sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I know that there's been a couple of different plugins you've been using around like populating in profile pics. Um, Voodoo Val was wondering, what are some of your favorite go-to plugins? Um, let's see, I like the, um, we're actually gonna use one of them a little bit later. It's a map plugin. So sometimes in apps you have to mock up what like a, an actual map might look like. So maybe like a Google map or whatever. And at most times, like you don't, for me personally, I like to brand the, the, the map to match the actual application or the brand. So there's um, the ability to actually go in and change the kind of like color theme of the map. Oh, so yeah. we're going to look, we're going to dig into that on another page, but that's one of my favorite ones recently that I've used because I have designed for a travel app in the past and that came in handy. And I feel like it's one of those things that just like saves so much time. Like you're not going to go off on your own necessarily. I mean, maybe you can and, and go off and like color a map, but if the, having like a plugin to do that, it also helps make your app like so much more cohesive with the color scheme that you have going on. Agreed. And on these kind of screens, like if say if you did take a snapshot, I think um, we should have the ability for the, the user to access their library right here. So they don't have to minimize the app and all that. So let's just met. Let's just add a little um, kind of a thumbnail icon here. I think we've been going with like 15 for our corners. That's another thing I'm, I'm trying to be consistent about. And I know there's like a bottom, um, on apps there's like a bottom area here. So we wanna make sure that we're not getting too low. And let's just pretend that we took a photo. Maybe this was the other photo that we took from earlier, a different angle of the park. Maybe there's more of like a meadow. And 
And then I'm just gonna hold shift and come down one, two, three, four. I think four, 40 pixels from here is good. If you hit shift and your arrow buttons, um, your directional arrows, it'll um, it'll go 10 pixels every time you click that. That's another way to be consistent if you're not using the guides. And then I think this is where we can put a button that says next camera. So you can kind of cycle through to each angle. So I'm gonna borrow a button. I'm gonna borrow this get started button that we made earlier. Again, it's, it's, it's good to just reuse the elements when you can and just modify them so that you're being consistent with your, your elements. And right now, I'm gonna make this more of like a stroked icon, I think. So I'm gonna get rid of the fill and give it a border of something like here, like this kind of beige color. And I think I might change the weight to like a two because it's feeling a little bit not that easily to see. I'm not really loving this tan actually. I might go with um, our forest green. Pops a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like that definitely is more legible on that coloring I like that. I want to make sure that this is lined up. So I'm just kind of like butting it up against so this against the edge of this card or this image and then bringing it down. That looks pretty cool. It's a simple page. It doesn't really need much more. The, the real focus of this page is to look at the feed. So we don't want to distract too much with too many bells and whistles. And then I'm going to actually just group all this together. Oops, group. And let's call this, what did we say earlier? Was it a uh, drawer or did we say um, tray? Oh, the whole thing? Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, I think you were saying it was a tray. Just say live cam tray. And we'll make it a component since there's a lot of things happening within it. And this is what we can do now. I'm gonna crop this. I'm gonna crop the artboard to the actual size of this drawer or this tray. Then on this state of the live cam, since this is the actual clickable, actionable part of the, the component, we can actually add a um, an interaction here. So I have my camera on selected in my component. And right here underneath, you see it says uh, interaction. We can actually add a plus here and we want it on tap is the trigger. So what triggers this uh, interaction is a trigger. You can change that to other things. And then we want this to, we want this to transition. We're gonna do a transition for this. And then the destination is our puppy cam. And we want this to ease out. My bad, we're gonna make this an overlay. So see, it changes the actual like line of this so that you know it's going to link to an artboard and overlay. And also, you kind of get this new little like handle here, this little um, kind of green crosshair thing. It's basically showing you that you can move this to kind of go wherever you want on this artboard. We're going to kind of have it just come to the bottom right here. It's going to overlay everything on that page. So let's test that real quick. It's kind of coming in just really, really quick. It's too fast, but it's working. So let's modify that. Let's click on this component again. And I think it's happening for like 0.3 seconds. And it's also just a dissolve. We don't want it to dissolve. We want it to slide up. So maybe like a 0.8 seconds. Let's try that one more time. That's pretty nice, very subtle. And then if you click again, it just go, kind of goes down. I think it can come up a little bit more so that it covers up this information. It seems a little weird that it's kind of just peeking like that to me. We're probably gonna have to extend the length of our 
artboard for that to happen. Otherwise, there would be a gap, I believe. So to get back to that, if we want to get back to those controls, you have to make sure you click on your component. And then prototype. Oh. Yeah, see, I think that fits a little bit better. When you actually work with like the native elements from either iOS or Android, you'd want to test to make sure that this isn't coming up past those things. So just something to be aware of. But I'm liking that, uh, I'm liking that puppy cam. Yeah, it's a really nice touch. I think the video idea is really fun. And I know Sergio, like we've always been getting ideas in the chat from other people. Sergio had an idea around like the video stuff of like, what what about a button to activate the mic? So like, I think there's some some people talking about like two ways, like if there's audio or speakers, like maybe you could talk to your dog or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's multiple buttons here. So maybe this, um, this uh, right here, this camera icon isn't the only one. Let's actually group, why didn't I group this earlier? See, that's already bad, bad design right there. Bad housekeeping. I need to group this, call it snapshot. And we can actually just duplicate this holding alt and shift. Let's make a little audio icon here. Good idea, Sergio. Good idea. I, it would be nice to, to talk to the dog. I guess right now you'd be talking to this little tribe of dogs. But maybe there, maybe there's a camera angle that's in the actual kind of gated off area for your own dog that you can talk to. So it's good that we can actually design the um, the feature in this. So let's say audio. Might need microphone. I think that's another common design pattern for anytime you're interacting with audio, or you're trying to say something is the actual like microphone. Yeah, the common like speech icon for sure. This one has a little bit of a thicker weight. Maybe we can make an icon real quick. Using this as reference. And we're actually going to round these um, caps here. What did I have here? 1.5. We're going to go to 2. Maybe like a 1.8. Yeah, I feel like it's nice to kind of be able to pull from inspiration or other assets like you've been doing this whole time and kind of riff on them. Sometimes it doesn't quite fit exactly the style that you have for your app, but you can always kind of use it to like adjust or in this case kind of use this like a template to create your own so that it feels better and it feels more cohesive. Because I think I've seen some versions where, you know, people are trying to just grab you know the icons they want for everything that they need but they don't match styling wise and you kind of want an, a very cohesive icon set or like imagery that you're going to have across your entire application absolutely and i'll i typically will make my icons just because i've been doing it for so long in illustrator but for something like this i think we can kind of quickly see you know how how it looks Little icon design here today. Nice. I mean, you're what a multidisciplinary designer. You gotta throw a lot of work in there. <laughs> That's the only like description of what I do that I can tell people. Because when I say I'm a designer, they're like, "What? Well, are you an interior designer?" And I'm like, "No, but that would be kind of cool." Right. Um, <laughs> There's so many uh, different types of design, and I think it's hard because a lot of people even within the industry itself, right? Like if you say that you're a graphic designer, you say you're a UI UX designer, sometimes there's actually like different meanings depending on where you work, like 
the type of work that you do within that type of role. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of confusion, but multidisciplinary designers, I feel like, yeah, well describes the type of work that you have in your portfolio range. Yeah, and I also just don't want to pigeonhole myself into one particular type of work because I enjoy UI design, I enjoy website design, I enjoy packaging and branding. So, I mean, I don't know if that works for everybody, but it's something that works for me. So something like that could, could work, I think. Awesome. Were we thinking there? You have your active mic button <laughs> so you can talk to the dogs. I just know that I had a, a puppy cam in my place one time. And when I left Dakota, if I ever talked to him through it, it would actually make him like more worried. He would want me to come home. So I just don't use the, the mic, but I, I know some dogs get comforted by it. So it's actually kind of big. See, I just zoomed out and I realized like, it seems a little bit too tall compared to it. So I might just finesse that a little bit. That's true. I suppose it would be kind of confusing. Like imagine you didn't really like imagine you, you were the dog and you didn't really understand the idea of this like two way audio thing and you just start to hear the voice and you can't find your human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> like what? where? Let's see if we can preview this interaction on, on the phone real quick. So I'm going to test this real quick. I feel like it'll be nice to figure out like how high up that tray comes to the part of the OS, um, like top bar that kind of blocks the design. New share. Okay, so I'm changing over to my phone now. There we go. Okay, so it seems to be fitting pretty well. And right there, I think the drawer came up maybe a little too high. Would you agree? Like it's kind of running into that notch a little bit. I mean, yeah. it's it's that's like right flush with it, but I think I would want it a little bit lower. But at least this live camera and where Audrey is, that seems to be positioned pretty well. There's enough clear space around it. Yeah, I like that. And then I can always just slide it out. But we'll, we'll fine tune that later. We'll actually move on to another page so we can uh, cover some more ground here. I'm gonna switch back to my desktop. Um, one of the pages that I thought would be fun to design is say like when you click on one of these uh, parks, like what does that look like? What does a park page look like? So I think um, for that, we can actually just duplicate one of these. gonna get rid of all this information for now. Let's call this um, park page. And I think for this park, we could pretend that um, it's say like this, let's do like the Big Sur. Since I have the Big Sur badge design, I wanted to include that on the page. So we'll, we'll change this to Big Sur for the sake of this stream. When I see in the chat, Jessica had a question kind of around Adobe Max. And so for those of you that don't know what Adobe Max is, we have a, a conference, um, a user conference uh, every year, kind of October, November timing, um, and kind of release the latest and greatest for Creative Cloud. There's a lot of wonderful sessions and artists that come. We have wonderful keynote speakers from like photographers to designers to animators and, and video people. So. Um, the question Jessica had, I know, Cody, you went to Adobe Max. I know this year we obviously were online. It wasn't uh, in person, sadly, but uh, Jessica was wondering if you did attend Adobe Max. Uh, if so, what were some of the sessions that maybe you liked that you attended? Yeah, I think I've been to Max, well, physically twice and then digitally once. 
yeah. <laughs> which is actually pretty cool to be honest like i i didn't mind kind of kicking back at home and just like i was actually working while i was watching so it's kind of nice i had my work on one screen and my um my uh, cast on the other screen uh so i could actually kind of multitask and just listen sort of like a podcast and um i really enjoyed um there's that uh, director, producer, Taika Waititi, I think his name is. And he did a lot of like the, he directed uh, Thor Ragnarok. That was a really awesome movie, by the way. Uh, he was just very inspiring because he was very like fun and kind of like laid back, but also very like, very humble, but also very talented. Like, you know, he knows he's talented, but he didn't brag about it. He was just kind of more being like a silly, silly dude. And um, just talking more about how his creative process sometimes feels very disorganized but at you know the last minute he'll scramble to get things done and he's i don't think he's like recommending people do that but that's just kind of like the the struggle with creative sometimes is like we can you know the task feels very daunting at first but then when you kind of get put under pressure you can kind of really focus in on the things that you need to get done and sometimes that's when magic happens so i really enjoyed just that his whole kind of like take on that and um that was one of those more like aspirational Adobe Max sessions that I enjoyed. It wasn't really a session, it was more of like a vignette on him. But actual sessions themselves, there was a um, there was an Adobe Arrow uh, session that, um, I forget the, the designers that worked on that, but they've been featured on Adobe Live quite a few times. I think they actually, the, the, the one designer is does some spots with uh, Andrew. And, um, but they went through Adobe Arrow and some packaging design for like beer labels. And they actually, put them onto a physical beer can and kind of um, projected it on their desk. So you could actually see what this mock-up would look like as an actual like six pack can of beers. I thought that was really interesting. Cause I'm trying to do more of that sort of like real life scenario mock-ups. Yeah, I feel like that's becoming a little bit more, you know, of a trend, especially with like augmented reality, things like that too, like kind of apps of being able to see like your designs on something else in real space as well. Um, I know that there's, you know, been some artists that have been kind of projecting their stuff and viewers can kind of see it within an actual space, which is interesting. It's really helpful for, especially if you're presenting to clients, they can actually get an idea of how it's going to translate. And it's, to me, it's a little bit more easier to sell the idea that way. And they appreciate it too, so. So I just dragged in the same image from this one. We're just pretending this one's Big Sur now. Because I really love this image. And I think some text would look nice on top of this. And I'm gonna bring my back button in because once you click into one of these, you wanna be able to get back to the Discover page. So we're just gonna copy this and just paste it. It'll place it in place. We want to make sure that those these buttons are always in the same spot. We don't want them jumping around the page. So we're creating that kind of familiarity or, you know, recognition of where you should expect certain elements to, to live. And then I'm going to grab this title, copy it, and then just paste it here. I'll make it white. We'll just rename this to uh, Big Sur Forest Park. That would be such a cool thing if your dog could actually play around in like a section of the forest. That would be. I was gonna say, I was like, this dog looks so like ethereal and like the lighting coming in through the trees. <laughs> this dog's a model. Oh yeah. <laughs> dog gets paid the big bucks for this photo. <laughs> sure. And I think we need to bring kind of like how we did those overlays before. I'm just going to make that real quick. Just a square. Go to the border, go to the fill. Linear gradient. We'll come down to 100% black on both. And then on the far, mo far right part of this gradient, I'm just going to drag this all the way down to 0%. Actually, I'm going to do it on the left so that I don't have to flip this box. And we can kind of play with this gradient a little bit where it starts and where it ends. And we don't need the box to be fully vis visible. So we're just gonna bring it down a little bit, maybe like 40%. And then I'm gonna bring it behind my text and see how that pops a little bit more now. Just because we never know what image is gonna be there. We wanna make sure it's always legible. 
Yeah, it looks good. And then I want to bring this um, this little badge back in, or this little pill um, label. You can actually make it a little bit bigger now that we're kind of on the on the uh, more detailed page. I think the other thing that's nice about this is the placement of like, you think about the image and like where the dog is in terms of the white space from the text. Like if the dog was on that left hand side, it would kind of compete with overlapping over the text. And so sometimes I find that like, if you have images that lend themselves well, like sometimes you can actually just like flip the photo if you, you know, if it doesn't distort anything just so that it, it reads a bit better in terms of the space that you have with the image and, and the text. Yeah, you can make it sort of a rule for the designers that you always want to find if it's going to be left justified text like this, you always want your focal point to be on the right. Yeah. Or just at least not competing with that copy for sure. Correct. And then let's just bring our guides up again. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm good here. I just realized our button isn't in line with our guides. So let's change that and make sure that we update it on the next Maccabi here. I guess it was. Oh, I have different guides. See, that's a big no-no. I need to make sure these guides are all lined up, but no big deal for now. We're gonna have to relink re these later. Right, so that's looking cool. Now, this is where we wanna add a little bit more information as to what the park has to offer. So we already know it's the big surf forest park. We already know small dogs. That's just kind of a reiteration right here. Uh, but I think like maybe, maybe there's like a rating, maybe uh, these parks have different kind of reviews or ratings that people can um, contribute to. So obviously it's going to be one of the better ones because it's big surf. So we're gonna give it like a 4.8, I think, or 4.5 out of five. So for that, what I'm going to do is let's borrow some of our other text. Did I make any smaller titles? I, just, I think I did right here. Copy this over. I'm just going to write um, overall rating or just overall. We'll do 4.5. Oops. going to bring these down. I don't want these text box too big. I'm going to left justify so that kind of sits right above the four. And then we can actually add some little like star icons to show you can actually visualize those those stars because it's typically like 4.5 stars out of five stars. That's another design pattern that you'll see on a lot of different apps. And I think it's a good um, it reassures people who are, are considering maybe going to this park that other people actually enjoy it. We've also been using some like all caps and text and sometimes you just use like the capital like sentence casing. Do you have any like tips for people as to like when to use the all caps or kind of how to use those? This is um like this sort of text right here is considered like eyebrow text where it's just more of um. It's, it's supporting the information that's like right below it. That's kind of how I'm using it. I also use it for just like smaller titles, like on pages where I don't want a huge title like this. The, the, the focal point really is this, uh, this information, this visual. So I'll use all caps for something like this. It's a little bit smaller. It doesn't take away. Or um, I'll use it to support something else that, um, you know, like this 4.5, I want that to stand out a little bit more. So there's a little bit of a, a relationship between the two, but um, the 4.5 is really that main focal point for this particular section of the page. You know, obviously this is your main focal point, but when you start scrolling down, I want this little kind of like descriptor to kind of support this, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And Henry is just wondering in the chat, if you can remind us what font it is that you're using again for this. This one is called Stolzl, S-T-O-L-Z-L. Yeah, I just wanted you to say it, not me. No, it's like a little bit hard to say. <laughs> yeah, it could sound like it's like German or Russian or something, Stolzl. Um, okay, so I'm gonna find some stars that look like they could work well. This one shows us 
a full star and a half star. So let's go with that. I think I'm going to shrink these down to be a little bit smaller. And my responsive resize on there. I'm just going to type in like 15. And for these stars, I think we can bring in our this sort of like um, orangey red color to bring a little bit more attention to them because it is kind of a important element on this page. I can actually use my repeat grid for this. Repeat grid, yes. <laughs> and I'm just gonna bring them back. If you find this little handle in the middle, you can change your spacing. I think five pixels between each is, is nice. And now I'm just gonna ungroup the grid because it already did its job. I don't need to flex that later. And I am going to drag in this half star. And it, it's calling these iOS half stars and stars. So I'm, I'm guessing that these are used in actual iOS um, interfaces. And then let's just type in 15. That was our sizing there. And see, it's already kind of like figuring out all the spacing for me. Love that. Four point five stars out of five. And I'm just gonna group those together. Just call them stars. And then I actually want to group all these three elements together too. So they're all kind of one little union. We'll just say rating. It's kind of nice to do this because you can then like move it around the page. Like if you have different iterations of your layout, you can actually just move them around like puzzle pieces and see where it fits best. I'm thinking it'll fit here. Okay. But we might want to move it later. So one, two, three, I think 30 pixels looks good for now. And then I actually want to add sort of like an intro statement or paragraph or description of this park. If you're coming here for the first time, you kind of want to know a little bit about it. So I might borrow my 4.5, paste it down here. And let's just write um, park overview. This could be anything you could write like, it could say something about the actual park itself. Like it could, it could say like, um, forest park in the woods, you know, I mean? like you say anything you want, but I think park overview kind of just shows like, now this is where you should expect to get that at a glance messaging or information. And I went with a bold just because I wanted to, to pop a little bit more here. Why am I saying make it pop? I hate that's like the worst thing a designer could ever say is make it pop. And then, so this is where we want some subtext. Some like body paragraph copy here. This could probably be maybe 16 or 18. Let's see what 18 looks like. Let's just write um, 2.3 acre dog friendly park. nestled in the forest of Big Sur. Maybe I should be a copywriter. <laughs> I was gonna say nestled in the forest of Big Sur. Nice. I think the other thing is, I think, you know, Cody's been designing like really like high fidelity designs in some regards, like a little bit more high fidelity. And so um, I find that at this point, like when Cody's going into like some of the detailed like description copy, Sometimes if you're, you know, in a hurry or you don't need to go into that much detail and write that copy just yet, or you have a copywriter who maybe is going to put something in later. Um, sometimes you can just put like the wireframe bars of like a rectangle, you know, like the little rectangles with rounded corners and just kind of repeat grid that into the section so people can get a sense of like, oh, like there's generally going to be some detail copy here. Um, but I think, you know, as Cody's been designing, it's been nice to actually have like actual copy so you can see this thing um, in its fullest form. Yeah, and typically if I if I am designing and I'm presenting to say clients or internal team, 
wireframes are a good place to start so that you can actually, you know, it's less, um, it's less stressful if it's like more, um, I don't know, like you're, you're not worried about like the final colors and the buttons. It's more just about the content on that page and the layout. So I think that's always a good step before you get into this. Luckily I did have those sketches to kind of have a, a starting point and you know, it's different when you're, when you've been working in the field for a few years, you kind of like have an eye for it after a while. So that's why we're able to test things like this. And I have been creating sort of like these elements and other pages. So I'm kind of just like plopping them in when I, when I have them. So that always helps too. If you've already designed something once or twice, you can, you can borrow from your existing designs. And I actually want to add like the badge for the big stir here. So I might have to change the sizing of this later. But let's let's drop that in. So I think I have it in Illustrator. The full badge. Because I think it would be kind of neat if each park had its own branding. You know, they all have the same logo, but then like for Big Sur, you get this little bridge in the water. Maybe, like I said, like Half Dome for Yosemite or something like that. Maybe some Red Rocks for like Sedona. But I'm gonna copy this version of it. Paste it in. Right now it's the same kind of beige color. We're gonna just change that. I think this text can come down to maybe like a 14. And I'm gonna change this as well. Again, this is just sort of a, a neat little delightful moment for anybody coming to this page. It just feels more branded and, and keeps a little bit more continuity of, of what you're experiencing. Plus maybe there's a section in this app where you can actually sell some merch for these parks. And if they saw this and then they actually get there and you have like t-shirts, that's, they already kind of know, they're kind of conditioned to know that like that's something that's offered. So I'm and a big fan. Merch from National Park. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Um, Aaliyah in the chat was saying, is there a way to link like the Google map location to the park? Um, and then, you know, Jessica was saying, maybe you could even point out like the dog friendly features of the park in the overview, um, details like that. Yeah, those are all great ideas. And I think, I think we're gonna do both of those. So good, good input. Jumping ahead, yeah. <laughs> like it. Maybe we just say overview so it doesn't run into the uh, badge too much. And again, this is where you wanna like see what kind of text you have in here and how long it is because it could run on too long. So you kinda have to make some rules as to where it'll break. I think that's okay for now. And let's actually add those, let's call them amenities, those different, um, you know, things or features that the park has to offer. So I'm actually gonna copy the same title here. Just paste it, bring it down here. Let's just make this badge creating overview. I'm renaming my uh, layers real quick. You're being so good about all your namings and groupings today. <laughs> trying. Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's it just means after this, you have to keep working on the app, make it a real thing and like hand it off to other designers so people can look in, inside your file and be so happy with how you've organized it. <laughs> we'll just make it a UI kit. We'll put it on Behance. You guys can download it. Yeah, there you go. All right, so this is where I think we can bring in some more like iconography just to kind of support whatever we're saying. So I think like one of the things people want to know is like, is this park or does this bark offer like overnight lodging? Cause maybe you want to, maybe you want to take, um, you want to camp at the summit of where you hiked and you just want to know just in case, like if I don't get back in time, can, can my dog stay there overnight? So I think we should show some supporting icons with that copy. So for this one, I might copy this overall text, bring it down. This is where we can say overnight lodging. something like that. And I kind of want to like contain 
whatever icon we're showing within a shape like this, just to kind of bring that familiarity back. I like this shape and the roundness. And move this over, paste this down here. Let's get rid of this uh, arrow. And I'm gonna remove the border and add a fill. And let's see, do we have any, I might sample the same color that we use for this right here. Let's actually add this to our palette. It's just a little bit different than the background. So it can serve as like a subtle kind of stage for our icon. I mean, it's about 20 pixels away. And since it's overnight lodging, let's see if we can find something. Maybe like uh, night. Got a lot of different weather icons here. Let's see what this one looks like. That one's kind of cute. Type in like 20. And then we can actually add like more information. So right now it's just saying overnight lodging. We want to say, yes, it has maybe up to two nights. You can keep your dog there or something. So I'm gonna copy this. We could say up to two nights. Let's group all this together. Night. I'm going to say ICN for icon night. And let's just say label. So now that we have one of those, we can actually just duplicate these. Oh, let's actually group both of those. Overnight lodging, we'll call it. And let's make them about 30 pixels apart from each other. Maybe there's a few, maybe like three different amenities for this park. It could be more, but we'll just do three for now. And we can say, uh, oh, does it have a puppy cam? You know, since we made a puppy cam, we already have that icon. Let's borrow that. the stroke down a little bit kind of match what we have these icons aren't exactly the same there's like some different nuanced little things happening but i think for now it's fine yeah on a heat in the chat just said that the app it looks amazing cody i feel like yeah it's really coming along just nice and we're about Thank you. 10 minutes out from when we're going to do the artist spotlight. So Cody's going to be continuing to design. And for any of you who are just joining us, he's working on the mobile app for dog friendly hiking adventures. And um, this is day two. So you can always check back out uh, the first day stream and catch up on some of um, the beginning parts of his thinking to getting to here. Um, but yeah, stay tuned in, in 10 minutes. We're going to do the artist spotlight. Awesome. I'm going to add one more. Maybe like also while you have your dog at the park, they can, um, maybe you can get them like a puppy bath or something. I know that that's something that I had Coda when he was at the overnight place. They're like, oh, do you want to like upgrade for like a bath? I'm like, yeah, I want my dog to be clean. Is he good with baths? He's gotten a lot better. Um, he hated them at first. I had like claw marks on my arm from him trying to like get out. Oh, no. okay. well, Sheba's typically hate water, so he's he's getting better about it though. Let's find like a water meme or meme. So icon. you're like, oh, somebody else can do the puppy bath. I won't get the claws. <laughs> exactly, and he smells fresh when I get him back. Right. And he feels better, I'm sure too. Uh, 
Um, yes. The baths. I think I want to bump these up a little bit on the spacing. Like one, two, three. They're feeling a little far. And we can actually, I want to see what it looks like with maybe like a little like box around this to kind of encase them all. So I'm going to sample the background and just kind of come down a little bit. And then let's round these again to 15. Just to kind of break it up so that they don't feel like they're just floating out in the abyss. They have some sort of, uh, you know, encasing. And it kind of lets you know like you're in the next section. Let's just group all this together. All the amenities. All right, let's get down to the map real quick. I know we're running short on time. I'm just gonna create a box here that matches like the same sort of width as this. Again, we'll just write in 15 for the uh, border radius. And let's get to this plugin over here. It's called Fancy Maps, sweet name. Uh, let's see here. So this is cool. You can actually say like, where, where are we traveling? You can do a surprise destination. You can click from some of these, but we're going to type in Big Sur. So that's where our location is. And you get these different uh, map selections that you can, um, you can check out. I want to find something that sort of matches what I'm, what I'm looking at here as far as color wise. I think something like this is not bad because we get some of those greens and sort of like lighter colors. Uh, we want to zoom in a little bit more. You have the state, city, and street view. I kind of like seeing a little bit of the coast. So let's uh, let's select our shape and then click apply map, and see how it just populates there. Oh, just like that. <laughs> yep. So easy. And we can add a title for this. I think I put this about twenty pixels away. So let's or fifteen. Let's just copy that. Let's just write um, location. Looks like we're going with a spacing of 42 right now between all these elements, so that's fine. And then we can actually um, grab our little dog guy right here. Since this is our like logo, like most minimal version of the logo, essentially like our app icon or like our favicon, we can paste this in on top. Ooh, we lost the ear. Oh no. <laughs> Copy those. Paste it in. Let's group that. I don't think they're grouped right now. Call it doggo. And then let's make a circle around this. Get rid of the border. I want to go to our red color. So it really pops off of that background. And then we can make this maybe white or even that cream, I think white might be better. Yeah. Group this, call it pin. Sorry, I'm going a little faster now. Maybe there's like a subtle drop shadow on it. Something like that just kind of points out to like where it's at. You could even like bring this point down to make it more of a, like a pin. Something like that, you know? Nice, I like that. No, it's cool getting like the, having like the little bit of styling in there too. So it's like very specific to this app of having like the logo in there and the little favicon. Um, kind of branding in there as well. Yeah. You could even add like a plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out, but really quick while we have, what do we have like five minutes? Yeah. 
Okay, I'm just gonna add a, a really quick like booking feature. So something that can like be sticky at the bottom of the page because we want them to be able to book. I'm just gonna create like a bottom navigation here. Give it a subtle little drop shadow. You don't have to rush too much. We'll do the artist spotlight and then we'll come back and we can take a look and kind of dig into this a little bit more before we, we close out. Okay. But basically we want to add a, a, a feature here that allows anybody to actually book and sign up for the dog park, the dog bark. So I'm just going to borrow our original get started button. Just paste it in here. I think this is actually a nice color on top of that white. And see, we're using that white color very sparingly. It's mostly this like cream, tan, beige color, but I think it kind of contrasts with the text a little bit and it's used intentionally for something that is, we want to stand out a little bit more. See, that green is actually pretty good in terms of like the one that's in the map. Like if that one coloring is very close to the button color you have. Just kind it of is like pretty close, isn't it? That worked out pretty nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm a designer or something. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, no, I don't mean to be so surprised. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, so we could just say like instant book, like maybe your credentials are already like in the app. And so you could just one click book it. I've seen that on a few apps before. And then we can actually add maybe like the price. It's important to know what, what this would cost. Uh, maybe we could do like per hour, you know, like maybe it's like $10 per hour or something. I don't know what the correct pricing would be, but let's do $7 an hour just to make it a little bit friendlier. I might actually bring this to like they were living it up. So $7 an hour seems like a steal, <laughs> right? I might go a little bit more of like a lighter gray since it's on top of white just to give it give the the price a little bit more punch you know what we're gonna make it ten dollars because you're right those got <laughs> those dogs are having a great time um so then let's just group all this real quick we'll call it a uh, booking nav for now and let's actually just make it um fixed position when scrolling so that it follows you down the page as you're kind of exploring everything. And you always have the, uh, the ability to book wherever you are on this page, because that's really important for this sort of a screen. But I think it's coming together, you know? And I'm just gonna link this to this page. Don't want it to be an overlay. We want it to be a transition and we want just to maybe push left. And let's just link this one over here. Let's see what happens with that. Yeah, that's fine. We want it to push right when it comes back though. So let's just change that. That works for me. And I didn't put my live camera on all these pages. I need to do that real quick. I need to put a time transition on this real quick because I forgot that it wasn't going back. So when you flip a card, we don't want it to push like that though. We want it to auto animate and snap. Nice, my camera hasn't gone off yet, so that's good. Nice. Whoa, that's too fast. I might have broke that, but. Oh, there was a delay, that's why two seconds. Uh, something's funky something funky is happening but 
We got it working yesterday. I want to check out that live camera again. Love the audio icon in there. That's uh that's a good that's a good feature ad. Yeah, that was a nice little addition that you made. Cool. Actually add another one of these guys here. Actually, let's add it to the bottom of this page. Maybe we pull in a different illustration instead of the dog. We can grab this lady with her dogs. And since this I mean, is illustrations just add like such a great little touch to everything and like the branding that you have, like it's all those little details that are so nice. Since this isn't like a results page, maybe we could just say like, we hope you enjoy your stay. You know, just something kind of fun like that. So good. <laughs> Well, well, we're going to come back to what Cody's been designing. We know we're, we're also, though, at the artist spotlight time. So we're going to do a quick transition here, and then we'll come back to the designs Cody's been working on. Um, so this is the artist spotlight section. Um, we are basically going to be taking a look at some of uh, Bojana's work. We have an artist that we're going to be highlighting today. And let's see. Here we go, get this up here. Um, you know, if you have, you know, any work that you've been doing and you wanna be highlighted in the future, you have a recommendation of someone, definitely check out our link that we have for Artist Spotlight or for Spotlight, uh, and you can get more information there. Uh, but let's take a look through and Cody, feel free to add any um, insights that you have to her work or anything that you wanna highlight here as well. Um, but we have a little bit of information about Bojana that I just wanted to highlight. Um, so they are a senior UI, UX and graphic designer um, and specifically working out of uh, Serbia. So we, I'm, it's really cool that we're able to highlight nice. a designer all the way over there in Serbia, <laughs> since I know we're, we're both located in California, um, but it's great to see like people's artwork from around the world. Absolutely. Um, the other cool thing I know about um, this designer is that they're proficient in a lot of different tools, but also works in like HTML and CSS. So kind of having a little bit of that other like coding background as well um, is something that I noticed in their work. And I think it's just super cool too, like the languages that they know, like knowing Serbian, knowing English, knowing Russian. I think that that is a huge asset as well, like oh, yeah. being able to have all of that in their, their skill set. Yeah, this is very clean work right here. Maybe no, I'm super excited that we can highlight because I also feel like um, they've been doing a lot of these XD daily creative challenges that we've been talking about before um, and that you know we have on the streams all the time. And so it's kind of cool to be able to highlight someone's work that they've been doing as well as like as they've been working on different challenges. Yeah, it seems like, uh, yeah, that's like three, three or four different challenges. That means that, uh, but John has been like active and been on it lately with uh, with the design. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's so cool to highlight someone that's been working on it in this like in the like Adobe Live kind of community that's been tuning in and doing the challenges. Um, so yeah, let's dig in. Some of the pieces I was taking a look at before that I thought were interesting that we could highlight was just like this um, type of branding work. I think again, also like there's a multitude of different projects just like that this designer's done around kind of like branding but also there's some like just ui design as well and kind of logo marks things like that um, so this one was draft to fold draft -a -fold. and had some sketches in here kind of different variations that i liked um, and gives a little bit of like information about the project um, that uh, the mark that they have is going to be like a draft plus a folder plus the dot of ink from pencil. Um, so I kind of like that they brought together like all those things that the studio kind of encompasses into this one mark here. That's very clever. And it feels like that mark works really well with that logo because it kind of resembles the D's in the actual um, typeface. Yeah, totally. 
And the presentation is very clean too, just the way that all these mock-ups are in there. Yeah, this, I really liked um, this one specifically because I think it had like a lot of the, like here are the colors, here are some sketches, but like presenting like fi the final marks as well. Um, and even here, like having this kind of finished, like applied um, kind of mock-up of how that would look on different assets, like the the note notebooks and everything mm -hmm. like that. Little pin, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I love this presentation of all the colors and just how the logo looks on, on a darker uh, color. Just kind of proving that it works in different um, situations is, is important. This is a great reveal right here too. Yeah, there's so many marks that they've they've applied it to so many different versions here as well. Like you have like a screenshot on a phone, like all of that too. It's kind of nice. Yeah, like imagine being the client and then receiving a presentation like this. You're gonna be sold on it. Like this is like letter pressed in there. That's professional. <laughs> yeah, the letter press is awesome. <laughs> I did like the texture look of I think it was this one, right? That's cool. Yeah, that one's really cool. It's an awesome angle. Um, the other one I wanted to take a look at that just like varies that I think is nice to see in the portfolio because you have kind of like that like branding mark um, and that kind of work was even just stuff in this like creative challenge um, that Bajana had worked on, which was a challenge around kind of like booking flights. So using assets and kind of like a UI kit for the daily challenge, but then really making it a bit of their own and, and fleshing that out a bit more. So we have the mock in here to be able to search for flights. Um, we nice. have some of the like flight details and kind of like when you've successfully booked something. And then again, kind of utilize like a different layout here of seeing it on like all of these um, iPhones. That's a very interesting layout. I haven't seen that before where it's actually kind of cut out of the, the notch. Oh yeah. Layered like that. It's interesting, I like that. Yeah, and then lastly, I feel like always nice to also see kind of like how it's hooked up and like actually in play. So I think sometimes it's nice to have this like click through if you have been able to prototype something up uh, to be able to see that in action and all the transitions that you, you've you made and thought through. Absolutely. Successfully booked. <laughs> yeah, and look at that hero shot of all the devices floating. That's a, such a cool rendering that I need to, I need to borrow that mock-up, I think. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Gotta pass it along. <laughs> cool. There's a ton of different pieces in, in here. Is there one that you want to take a look at specifically, or we can maybe look at this mark next and then? Um, I actually really like this. The fact that they that Sojana put this actual interaction in there. It's pretty nice. Just showing how it all kind of connects uh, from page to page. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Oh, going back to another piece. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah let's do that. Uh -huh. Let's check um, we can check out this one real quickly. Another kind of branding identity piece, just because I feel like it contrasts a little bit more to some of the other styles that we saw in the work as well. And I just think it's like super clean, like really bold first image to kind of start with. Definitely. Let's take a look. Okay. Here we have, so package designs for case, DVD case, envelopes in two different sizes and invitation. Again, nice. really clean, just like kind of mocked up on all of these different pieces here. And then we have a mug, <laughs> which I love. It's a nice mug. Yeah. I and like seeing it on a different color background like that too. Oh, sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. Oh, no, no, you're good. Yeah, I think it ties in nicely too to this coloring. I feel like all of the pages, kind of the tones all feel really nicely incorporated with the thoughtfulness of like the background as well. It's not just like a white or black background. Mm -hmm. um, just but yeah, I think it's interesting having this little mark also like on the inside of the mug, um, not just thinking about like the outside. Yeah, it's like they, um, so John might have like skewed it or like the warp tool in Photoshop or something to get that effect. Yeah. Or maybe the mock-up already had that programmed in, but I like that a lot. We have the front shot. Kind of just, again, it applied on like some of this like black kind of matte shiny material as well. Nice. Well, super clean. Um, let's check out one more. I thought there was there's one that was interesting to me. I know we've done like a lot of daily creative challenges, 
Um, I kind of like this packaging design for Rome Tech just because it was a little bit different. Again, like some packaging stuff. I know, um, Cody, you've worked on some packaging as well. So I thought this would be a fun one to pull up. Um, nice. Yeah. That's so we a cool angle. This, yeah, like interesting like backgrounds. I feel like the use of backgrounds in, in this uh, portfolio was cool. Yeah, those are, those are awesome colors too. I'm a big fan of like teal and uh, and that kind of like more salmon-y red color. I think those are nice contrasting colors. And uh, this angle is just really interesting to me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like this. Gif. I like the, <laughs> the gift kind of coming through and seeing all the variations. It also feels like really like colorful, like it really like pops a lot too mm -hmm. with changing, keeping the background layout the same, but just changing out like the colors with each of the designs is nice. Yeah, it adds like a tone of like energy and just like joy, I guess. Um, it, it makes it more of a fun kind of moment where you can actually see, yeah, it works on every different color that we've selected and here we are kind of proving it. So that's yeah. nice to see. Yeah, and then there's just all the accessories, packaging, some different kind of like um, patterns applied to all these different styles. And then again, another one of these, I feel like I was looking through this earlier and I kind of was, I got like mesmerized at this point. <laughs> and this one, I just kind of kept it going on loop. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to stop. <laughs> I know it's kind of entrancing. I'm just like, don't want to stop looking. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, some awesome stuff from this designer. I just, I think it's great to be able to highlight um, someone else's work, someone who's working in Serbia, who's doing a multitude of different pieces, like interested in some UI UX, interested in some branding, some logo marks. Um, and I think has really put together, a, you know, a solid portfolio for themselves and including kind of working on these daily creative challenges. Um, yeah, really so, well done. Yeah, really well done. It, um, definitely check out Bojana, follow them on Behance. Um, they have their links to um, their social, their handles for email if you want to reach out to them and kind of discuss more of their work or kind of um, chat with them. So um, worth checking them out. And I'm glad we were able to take a look at another person's work today on the stream. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, and I said, I think I might have said Sojana by accident. Bojana, my mistake. Bojana. Thanks, thanks for sharing yeah. your work with us. Really excited yeah. about this. <laughs> yeah, really exciting. Um, but yeah, well, we're going to be going back to the work that Cody's been working on and um, we'll take a look at kind of if there's anything else you want to keep jamming on um, in the next kind of, I don't know, like eight, 10 minutes. We can kind of jam on that and then kind of wrap up where we've ended up with everything. Sounds good. Let me, yeah, you guys can see my screen, right? Perfect. I think, so we already have this page, this um, kind of like booking page. We've got our amenities, we have our location. Oh, we've got our woman kind of jumping over our bar here. So we need to make sure that we put this on top. So let me just close all these. And yeah, so that's something that if you don't have this layer on top of all your other layers, and that'll happen. So now if we go back, we can make sure that it is behaving properly and see how there's a little bit, I can't scroll anymore. We just wanna give our artboard a little bit more space at the bottom to account for that. Just like right here, we know it's gonna be sitting right about there. So let's double check that. There we go, sweet. I think another page we can probably design is um, maybe your profile page. So when you click on, say, this icon right here for Audrey, maybe there's a few options or, or you know what? Yesterday we heard somebody on stream saying that it would be cool if like your dog could achieve badges or sort of rewards for maybe things that they did while they were at the park. So I think like that could be something that lives on this next page. So let's do that. So I'm going to copy this over. Get rid of the live camera. That's right. Someone was saying that what was it yesterday? Like um, they had like good good dog behavior, or like did something. They could get little badges, which is like this fun idea. Yeah, exactly. I love that idea. I've, we've gotten like so many ideas from the stream already in the last like two days that I feel like I I want to have like a, a live audience for everything I design, so we can just make it way better. Yeah, it's fun getting ideas from everybody, and I know we just had a couple people join. 
um, Mustafa just rejoined. I, th I think you came to, on another stream we had and um, Bruce was saying like, just a big thank you, making XD look so easy and versatile. We'll definitely try it out. So Thanks, glad Bruce. that you're finding, yeah, that's really helpful. And um, Cody's been really great at kind of walking through the work and kind of speaking out loud to like what we're seeing happen. I feel like it's not, he's making it look much easier than it is. <laughs> He does make it pretty easy though. I mean, there's a lot of things that would have taken me a lot longer had I been using like, I used to use Photoshop in the past. So this is just, it's built for this. So there's gonna be a lot of things that kind of speed up your workflow, like the repeat grades and the components on the prototyping features. Um, it just really helps, you know, and there's definitely like a little bit of a learning curve if you're still getting into design, but there's so many resources out there, especially like this Adobe Live stuff that we've been doing, um, other tutorials around and just got, I think, even competing in those daily challenges is something that can kind of get those those creative juices flowing and just build more, um, you know, you just build more familiarity with the software by, by participating in those. So this is where I think we could say like, hello, Audrey, like this is like your profile. We kind of like center align this. Just a, a fun little moment here. And maybe you logged in with, or you created an account with like an email, perhaps like there's your email there. So I'll just say Audrey pup at gmail.com. Center line these both. Actually all three of these. We actually want to add the ability for somebody to change like any info on here. So maybe maybe Audrey changed her name or maybe the email changed or anything like that. We can actually grab one of our buttons here. Can't believe I didn't group this button. <laughs> Copy that, paste it here. And we'll just say um, edit profile. Coda just woke up. Oh, perfect timing. And I think for right here, we can actually add an icon, like an edit icon. So let's find one of those. Henry was asking, do you have a dog called Audrey? No, my, my dog's name is Dakota. He's uh, oh, definitely he's, awake. Let's see if he wants to say hi real quick. Hold on. Yeah, perfect. Doggo, <gasps> yay! <laughs> oh, so sweet. He just woke up, so he's a little he's a little groggy. Welcome to the live stream. Yeah, he was so sweet. He's so cute. Probably wants more food now. Um, anyways, we'll add a edit icon. I think something like. Um, this looks cool. This little like pen icon. We'll just make sure we're like matching the um, kind of stroke weight and size as our other one. Maybe like 1.5. I think it's what we've been doing. We'll go to our foresty green color. That looks cool. And did we group that this time? We did. We'll call it button edit. People are saying in the chat that you have such a beautiful dog or like a cute doggo or sweet baby, all these, all these comments coming. Oh, thanks. Which is, I feel like now also that all of you have seen um, his dog in person, you now get the little feature because you do have a photo of your dog in, hidden in one of those previous ones, right? Photos right here. This is when he was yeah. a puppy. <laughs> I really just wanted an excuse to put him in um, the stream, so. Yeah, for sure. Dakota needed a moment. See, he's 0.1 mile away because he's basically here. <laughs> Clever. Um, so and then this is where we could add those like, like badges or trophies or whatever you want to call them. I'm just going to create a square here on my grid, get rid of the border. And then let's just add a, a radius of 15, like we've been doing. 
I can turn my grid off now. And I'm gonna make this that um, lighter green. Maybe each, um, maybe each different badge or achievement, whatever we wanna call them, has its own color associated with it. So you can kind of see, it'd be kind of nice to see like um, a grid of multiple that you've collected. You know, maybe we start playing with the color palettes and things like that. And we can just title it like, um, what do you think, like achievements or badges? Recent okay. badges? Badges might be good. Check my grid again. Go. I actually made one. I think I did. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, nice. I just called this one the good pupper. <laughs> Maybe um, Audrey was a good pupper while she stayed and she ate all of her meals. Oh my gosh, so good. I can change my stroke weight because I've been scaling this down. I don't think I built it to the right size, but we can um, we can modify that. So I see on my size here, I can go like five. So maybe that's like, you know, Audrey actually ate all her meal because like when you pick up your dog, they usually give you like a summary of like anything that, that was off or th good things that happened. So like I remember like when I picked up Koto, they're like, oh, yeah, he ate all of his um, he ate all of his breakfast, but he wasn't really eating dinner as much, you know, maybe because he's not used to being there. Um, so they kind of like give you some indications on how they're behaving. And then also like, do they, do they play well? So maybe there's like a playtime one. Just copy You're this. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, I I want to like see all of these different badges and like I, I can see it being like this nice incentive too to like come back and like get more from the same place or something like that. Um, but I also know we're we're gonna soon wrap things up, so I think at some point it'd be good. Um, maybe you can give us a little bit overview of like all the things that you covered and kind of where we've ended up with things. For sure. So yeah, we could on, maybe another time or I can on my own time build out more of these badges because they're kind of fun. But just to kind of give like a bird's eye view, this, these are the screens that we designed during the last few days. It doesn't seem like a lot just because, um, you know, there's only like four or five, or I guess there's one, I consider this the same page, one, two, three, four, five, we've signed about five pages, but there's a lot of like nuanced little interactions that we added on these pages. Um, again, we started with just kind of um, rough wireframe sketches. I'll go to those real quick. Just kind of some of the more main pages that you would see in an app like this, you know, your your splash page, your onboarding kind of sign up, create account pages, your discover page. So again, this was just sort of like um, a step I took to kind of rough out the ideas. That way, when I got into actual XD, I had something to, to build from. Uh, we brought in a, a stock image from Adobe Stock, which is pretty pretty beautiful, and um, it kind of served as sort of the inspiration for all the illustrations you see with that throughout the app. Um, this is our actual branding that we brought in that was already pre-existed um, from a, a live stream I did a few weeks ago. We had selected our colors here and our typography, and we kind of brought all this together and um, actually got to apply it to an interface, which is like a mobile interface, uh, this sort of like booking app for National Bark, uh, where you could go in and you could see different, um, you know, parks and hikes and overnight stays. I kind of want to change this little dot now that I'm thinking about it because I showed it to somebody yesterday and they didn't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to change this to the dot three. With it. We had to sit with it for a little while and see if we wanted the hairline or the dot. I think that's a more clear indication that you're on the parks tab. So I would agree. Um, you know, we made some cool interactions like uh, this live camera. You could click it and then see your actual dog at the park. Uh, maybe snap some pictures, maybe if they're in a private kind of kennel, you can actually chat with them or kind of like, you know, talk to them. You could click the next cameras. Um, we made a little flip interaction. 
that kind of broke sometimes when we when we played with it. But I think that whole three transform tool has been a lot of fun, and I, I'm looking forward to exploring it more. Um, we actually created a park page, so our big Sur Forest Park uh, gives a little bit more information about the park, an overview, maybe some ratings. Uh, we actually have a specific branding per park. So in this case, this is the uh, Bigsby Bridge out of Big Sur. Makes it just feel a bit more personable. And we have the ability to book, like instant book one of these parks. And what else do we put on this page? Some amenities, you know, over, does it offer overnight lodging? Is there a puppy cam? This one in particular has four angles. So it's kind of an upsell perhaps on a park. Puppy, puppy baths, yes. And then we have our map and then just a nice little kind of ending illustration though, you know, you've reached the bottom of the page just to not leave any dead ends for our users. And then of course, we've got Audrey's beautiful profile here with, uh, well, the beginnings of her profile with, uh, you know, she was a good pupper because she ate all her meals. So that's so pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are so thankful, Cody, that you were able to join us for the stream and we really appreciate your time, been able to design so much and thank you all for joining us. Stay tuned. We have more coming up on Adobe Live and yeah, thanks again. Thanks guys. Thank you.